evening and welcome to our show, Astronomy for Everyone. Tonight we'll be celebrating our 100th show. I'm your host, Kevin Medden, and my guests this evening are Steve Woody and Ken Anderson. Glad to be here. Thank you both for being here. And briefly, we're going to touch on the history of this show, 99 shows into it as we begin taping number 100. And as I recall, there was a brief video piece played at one of the Ford Amateur Astronomy Club meetings where three of our members were interviewed by somebody. And I thought the interview was, you know, kind of weak. And when Lori and I came home that day, we said, hey, we have access to a cable studio. Why don't we um, see if we can put something together? So we brought it up to you guys at the club. And Ken and Steve are some of the, the original members of our crew. Yeah, if I recall, uh, we had a meeting at my house, and uh, just a planning meeting, and I had prepared by writing uh, a script, and we were going to read the script somehow on, on, the, on the show. Um, there were two things wrong with the script. <laughs> One was it took me eight hours to write it, and the other is instead of taking 20 minutes to read it, we finished it in nine. So. So, uh, but it also was wooden, and so we decided not to do that. Uh, we just have some hints, and, um, and we do it more or less uh, off the top of our heads as we're doing the show. And we also decided we wanted to have uh, um, a portion of the show where we talked about what's, what's up in the night sky, and uh, one of our uh, members said, hey, why don't we just use the term, what's up? And somebody could walk in and say, hey, what's up? And, you know, but uh, yeah, we, we decided tried, not to do that. We tried a couple times and it didn't, didn't work out too well. Yeah. So I, I guess in reality, we're just uh, a video version, or at least we're attempting to be a video version of your Sky and Tell, your astronomy magazine type thing. Yeah, in a limited way, yeah. In, in a magazine, you can see the the images and if you've got a sky chart or something you can bring that right out to your telescope or right out to your backyard um, and it's really tough to do that um, although people have tablets now and we are on YouTube and then we also had John Schroer come up and he did the the fancy intro where it was fancy at that time and he did two versions of the intro and uh, Liam uh, did the last uh, yeah version. we're on show 100 and we have three different versions and yeah. To me, it seemed to be getting better than better. Well, we uh, switched from the original, uh, you know, three by four ratio NTSC format to uh, uh, high def format, the sixteen by nine format. And we did that in the middle of twenty fifteen when we, uh, when the studio, in fact, moved from, um, uh, just down the street. So uh, uh, we needed a new intro because we needed a new intro that fit the new screen format. And since we've covered a variety of topics here in our first 99 shows, Ken, what were, what were your, some of your favorite episodes? Okay, my, my favorite episode is uh, the second epi episode, which is binoculars, which uh, um, Steve and I and, I, I and Don Claser was on that one uh, with binoculars. It's also the, the most popular episode when you look at the number of YouTube hits, it's the highest watched and also the, the, the highest number of people that uh, turn it on. So cumulatively it's, it's the highest watched. My uh, next favorite is uh, Mike Bruno's Scale of the Universe uh, where you have you know, him blowing up the sun to uh, I guess about five or five, six feet and uh, you know, re relating to, to the give it, different to give sizes on the planets sizes and the solar distances. system in this yep. case. And uh, Steve also walking <laughs> down uh, in the Science Center showing the distance in AU for the, the planets. Yeah. So we cover both actual size of the planets and the distance. Uh, and then I also liked uh, the two telescope shows, uh, you know, one of which John Schroer led also uh, where we had our uh, intermediate and beginner telescopes and our advanced telescopes. And then uh, I liked uh, the four... Uh, uh, seasonal shows where we talked about uh, the deep sky objects of the different seasons and then also the the remote shows where we did the planetariums. Yeah, because yeah. not, we're not tied down to the studio at all whatsoever. In fact, I recall one episode where we went, and I'm going to probably get this wrong, but I think we're at Gross Point North, if I'm not mistaken, when we actually did a um, show about radio astronomy, which is a topic you don't hear much about, but yet 
it's one of the prime you know, ways of researching astronomy. And these kids are doing what professionals are doing at a very large scale in various locales. What about you, Steve? You got any favorites? Yeah, my favorite actually, um, uh, uh, Ken touched on it. Um, so there's a planetarium show where we, um, where we, uh, we were at the Michigan Science Center. Um, but also, we were at uh, the Wayne State Planetarium, and there was a fire tornado demonstration, and there were some other <laughs> things. And we don't have any images, any like still images from those shows, because we didn't really use them. I mean, all we had were what's up, that sort of thing. And one of our big uh, things that we did on one of our remotes, uh, Brother Guy showed up at one of the planetariums. We got an interview with him. And for those who don't remember who Brother Guy is, he was the uh, chief astronomer at the Vatican. And he also wrote Turn Left at Orion, a very uh, famous very intro, yeah. intro beginner book. So, yeah, Brother Guy is, uh, uh, I think he is the curator of meteorites for the Vatican. Uh, and he also works um, out in Arizona. Uh, there is uh, the the VAT. The VAT is the Vatican. Hmm, wonder what the A stands for. Yeah. Uh, 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 astronomical telescope. But nonetheless, it's interesting that we started in 2009 celebrating the 400 years of Galileo looking through the telescope, and and here the Vatican is after what they did to Galileo for them to have their own uh, institution like this for astronomy. Well, Brother Guy actually came to UM right. Dearborn giving a speech or right. uh, a lecture about uh, Galileo's 400th anniversary and uh, his impact with the, the Vatican. So we, as we put this show together and we divide it into segments, all of a sudden Steve got in charge of two segments. So kind of explain to the folks how you pick the individual terms for each month and what are your parameters for putting what's up together? Um, so, um, so terms, I, uh, I really do pick the terms randomly. I like to pick terms that have something to do with whatever else is being shot on the show, whatever is being discussed, but often I'll just, I'll just uh, come up with uh, something out of the blue. Uh, so for example, today I had a term in mind, but I have a file of all of the terms that I've used, and it would have been a repeat, so uh, I had to pick something else. And uh, we, we brought the term in because when we first started the show, we were just putting a generic spacer in there, and we said we can use this time better to, you know, like a glass where you give a well, term, right. or, and Steve we sometimes using, uses a current event. You know, John Schwartz had access to astronomy PSAs, but there was only a finite number of those, and, and after we used them all, we needed uh, something else to put in there, and I think term was a lot better idea myself. Yes. Well, it's uh, certainly easier to, to do it. And when you're putting what's up together, do you just try to, obviously we've always done where the, the moon phases, and you always do the planets, but what else do you try to incorporate? Of course, you never know how long you're going to get Some, either. Sometimes That's we right. have the Steve Witte phases <laughs> on April. Yeah, the, the April show, yeah. So uh, I, I, um, I actually go to the uh, website heavens-above.com for uh, uh, what, when things will rise and set and, and uh, where, more or less where in the sky they are. And then I use a planetarium program, and I try to group together uh, the planets um, for that. And usually there's something of interest in, in, the, in the setup. There's something uh, interesting, uh, you know, uh, Mercury will be particularly easy, or uh, another planet will be just disappearing, or something like that. Uh, but also, we'll have, um, uh, like in August, we have the Perseid meteor shower, and there are regular meteor showers that, that we... Uh, right, like the Leonids in November. Like, it, that's right. And, uh, and so I'll talk about those if I can. And, um, and sometimes there's a comet that um, is bright enough that you can at least see it with binoculars. Uh, comets are very tricky because um, even if we're shooting quite late in the month for the, for the next month, uh, sometimes the comets will just appear and you've got them. And, oh, you know, why didn't you talk about them? Well, it's because <laughs> we didn't know about it soon enough. Well, I kind of figured we didn't want 10 minutes of talking heads here or whatever we're going to get for this first segment. So I understand you put together some images to uh, review and remind people yeah. of some of the topics we've covered. So I, uh, I've, taken, I've taken just an image from each of several shows. 
And uh, so at the, this first one, and we're talking about outreach, and uh, this is the NASA ambassador program. So um, uh, we've got somebody holding a model, and they've got uh, basically a trifold, uh, uh, you know, just uh, something to, that they're talking about. And this is uh, outreach going to, I believe in this case, a middle school. And the, uh, she probably has pictures to hand out uh, and so on. Uh, I don't remember actually which show this was, but we wanted to talk about uh, what the Earth really looks like, and it isn't flat like this. And I just thought it would be kind of kind of interesting to see, you know, well, what what would it look like? Well, we know that the Earth isn't flat because um, if it were flat, then cats would have pushed everything off by now. <laughs> uh, so this is now this the, looks familiar. Yeah. So the the Hubble Space Telescope, one of the uh, early uh, really good pictures after the uh, uh, corrective optics were put in, was this. Um, uh, I believe the left picture, the Pillars of Creation, which is in the Eagle Nebula, and then later uh, the Hubble. And it's supposed to look like an eagle carrying a fish. So well, if you if you zoom out to, and and see more <coughs> of it, right? It's kind of like point. It's it's. This version is where it's like flying upwards. So you have the wings, the head is the one in the middle, and the fish is the, the one on the right-hand side. And the, uh, the right picture, <coughs> I believe, is in infrared. So you can actually see through uh, bits of the nebula and so on. So, and, yeah. and, and also, you can see where the, the, the stars are at the points of all That's those right. pillars. Yeah. So this is a recent one. Uh, the picture is an 1800s picture of the Lick Observatory. Uh, Sandra was talking about the Lick just recently, last yeah, couple of months. Yeah, it's on top of, I believe, Mount Hamilton in yeah, California. That's right. Uh, this is kind of interesting. I did this in, um, uh, I did this in like 2014. Uh, this picture is from when I was in Boy Scouts in 1972. And this is a partial solar eclipse. So if you're not on the eclipse, if you weren't on the eclipse path, path in August, uh, most of the U.S. would see a partial uh, solar eclipse. Uh, and this is one of the correct measures for doing this. That's right, yeah. This is projection. So I've got the telescope pointed straight at the sun, and uh, I'm projecting it on a piece of paper, and you actually look at the piece of paper just like the camera is. I, I do want to caution you. When you do solar projection, uh, uh, Steve was using a, a small aperture uh, reflector here, but uh, it, you know, one time I tried doing it with a 10-inch Dobsonian and I got a little off axis and uh, my, my telescope started smoking on the inside, so uh, yeah. you, know, you don't yeah, want to start a fire inside your telescope, yeah, this so, is, uh, even I'm, though it's safe for your eyes. This was a 50 millimeter telescope. I've done it with a 60, just slightly bigger, and, and uh, I, so that's, that's under three inches. And I, I was using my cheapest eyepiece and I did uh, uh, smoke up all the glue in the eyepieces, so you yeah. uh, don't want to use never, the best eyepiece either. I didn't have any trouble here. I've done yeah. it with binoculars as well. Okay, uh, this looks like a... And so this is M51. I usually see this upside down with the smaller little uh, galaxy to the right but then to the left. But um, uh, And uh, this was taken actually by one of our uh, club members. And then we have another galaxy, M101. Uh, also uh, uh, taken by a club Gordon member, Hansen. Gordon. Yeah. Yeah. M M101, M101 is a, a lot dimmer when you're looking at it uh, naked eye. Uh, it almost has to be right, right. up uh, right. near the zenith so what, uh, to, to be able to see it good. So um, this next shot is uh, from Astronomy at the Beach, which is this month, uh, late in the month. Uh, um, don't miss it. Look it up on uh, GLAAC, G L A A uh, C uh, dot org or com, I forget. Anyway, um, and uh, here's, a, here's another, this is the total eclipse um, from uh, 2010, but um, this is the kind of thing that uh, we should have seen last month. And I guarantee it will almost look just like this when, uh, you think? when, when we see it uh, <laughs> last month, right? <laughs> when we see it last month, right. Yeah. Well, it looks like we're going to have to wrap up this segment. We had a few more pictures to go through, but that's not, that's not a big issue. And uh, if you'd like any information about our program or if you've got a question for us, look on the lower third of your screen here and get the email address. And stay tuned because the ubiquitous Steve Woody will be right back with Term of the Month.
The term of the month is Earthshine. This is the partial illumination, usually of the moon, from light reflected off of the Earth. And uh, we have a, an image that uh, 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 demonstrates this. It's hard to photograph because uh, cameras don't have the dynamic range that your eyes do. But our regular, one of the, our third quarter shot in our uh, moons, our every month moons picture, uh, shows a little bit of earth glow. That is, you can see some details on the moon uh, in that third quarter uh, shot in the upper right here. So, term of the month, Earthshine. Thanks, Steve, and welcome back to the 100th show celebration of Astronomy for Everyone. Now we're going to take you on a brief tour of how this program is put together, beginning in our studio, which, besides me on the set, includes three camera operators, two of which you can see here, whose main responsibilities are making sure that the right person is on camera at the right time, and uh, the middle camera is our, our uh, two-shot camera, and the cameras you see on either side are single-shot cameras. Now in the background, you can see a couple of windows, and that's where our tour will continue next, into the control room. Thanks, Kevin. Welcome to the control room. And I'm Ken Anderson. I'm the director and technical director. And I'm using the TriCaster. And uh, with the TriCaster, uh, I can uh, put my lower third up. And uh, I can also uh, put up the different events. Uh, switch that. What's, what you see in the, the top right screen is what's uh, showing live and uh, I'm able to switch uh, between, I have the headset on because normally I talk to the, the camera people and I can switch between the different uh, cameras that are outside so you can see Kevin is waiting for the next segment and uh, also um, I can bring up the pictures uh, so uh, right now uh, you can see uh, we have the solar uh, eclipse uh, and uh, Here's, here would be the, the, the flat earth, and, uh, and so uh, ba basically what I do is I, I direct the show between the, the, the three cameras outside and bring in all the pictures, and we can also do the, the introduction and uh, the credits uh, from here, and uh, now Lori will talk about uh, her role in uh, editing and uh, recording. Hello there. Um, my name's Lori Poremski, and uh, usually I uh, pair with uh, Liam Finn, who's not here tonight, to uh, help uh, edit the show and control the live feed. So what we're actually doing here is we are capturing the live feed as it happens. Once we are finished with this, we will take all of the segments and we will put them together and edit them. So we'll edit out the first couple of seconds of the countdown, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, as the director tells us, and then we will uh, end the show and piece the, the uh, segments together. And after we piece the segments together, if there are any little glitches or errors, we will take care of those by inserting additional pictures or corrections as needed. And now I'm going to pass you over to Barb, who is helping us with our audio this evening. Thank you, Lori. The audio board also is important. It tells the levels of all the people that are speaking at the moment. It also controls the music that'll come in during any of the programming. It doesn't seem like it would be a very interesting part, but it's an important part. And now let's get back to the program. Well, every good show has to have cameras else you wouldn't see anything. So as I focus on Steve here, I can slowly zoom in. And for those of you who are wondering about Steve's wonderful hat, that's the hat that he wore the first time we did a show here. And I'm going to slowly pan 
and tilt down and get a wide shot of Steve. Now I'm going to pan and do the uh, background for Astronomy for Everyone, which was picked up, I believe, at Borders Bookstore. So you can see it can be very creative. And since we are our three camera shoot in the studio, I can actually pan and go right to another camera and also focus in on what's going on in the studio. So there you have a brief synopsis of how to operate a camera. We hope you enjoyed this behind the scenes tour of our studio and control room and appreciate how we put together astronomy for everyone. And hey, if you have a topic or if you'd like to be a guest in our program, please contact us via our website or email. Now we're going to continue the celebration of our 100th show with our 100th show celebration cake. Yay! We'd also like to mention to Don Glazer and to Bob and to Liam, we do miss you and you better be back here for next week or next month's show. Now I'm going to throw it back to Mr. Steve Woody who's going to close out the show with What's Up in the Night Sky, September 2017. So what's up in the sky for September? The sun rises uh, from uh, 6.58 in the morning to 7.30 over the period of the, over the course of the month and sets uh, just after 8 to uh, about 7.15. Uh, there is the autumnal equinox on September 22nd. The moons start with a full moon on the 6th third quarter on the 13th, a new moon on the 20th, and a first quarter on the 27th. Now, uh, Mercury is kind of an interesting uh, uh, beast this month. On the 12th, Mercury has its maximum e western elongation, which is when it's farthest uh, from the sun from the perspective of the Earth. Uh, but that's on the 12th and that's what we're showing. But on the 15th, uh, the moon is at perihelion. That's as close to the sun as it gets. So it's not as long an elongation as it might be. Uh, it's still probably your best shot for Mercury in the morning. Uh, Mercury is in uh, Leo. It rises from 618 to 655 over the course of the month. Venus, which is also here at the top, uh, is in Leo. Uh, as, is Mars, as is Mars this month. And it rises from 417 to 523 over the month. Uh, it is better earlier in the month. And Mars is also in Leo, and it rises at nearly 6 a.m. Uh, to 540 a.m., and it's better earlier in the month, uh, later in the month. And that's uh, because one, uh, one of the planet is closer to the sun than us, and the other is farther away. In the next slide, Jupiter is in Virgo, and it sets between 9.42 to 8 p.m. So better earlier in the month, we're losing Jupiter. Um, 8 p.m. is before the sun sets at the end of the month. We really have lost it by then. Uh, Saturn, also here, is in Ophiuchus. It sets from, uh, at uh, uh, midnight 46, we'll call it, uh, to 10.50 p.m. and is better earlier in the month. Uh, usually about an hour after sunset is the best for uh, Saturn this month. Uh, and you can see Pluto is in this shot. Is in, uh, Pluto is in uh, Sagittarius uh, near the moon here on, uh, uh, I think this is the first of the month. Uh, it rises uh, between 5.25 and 3.15 p.m. So uh, it's up with sunrise, uh, sunset. Um, it's better earlier in the month, 
Uh, but remember, it is magnitude 14.4. This is challenging in a 10-inch scope. You need a fairly hefty scope and a decent sky chart to see Pluto. Uh, then we have Uranus and Neptune uh, uh, <laughs> with, um, with the Moon and Pluto also uh, just on the right. But uh, Uranus is in Pisces. It rises from about 10 p.m. to 8 p.m. over the month. Uh, the transit, this is when it's highest in the sky, is uh, from 4.30 a.m. to 2.30 a.m. over, the, over the, uh, the course of the month. It's magnitude 5.7, so this is potentially a naked eye planet. I have actually seen it with my naked eye. I did find it with a telescope before spotting it. Uh, and then Neptune is in Aquarius, as it has been for ages. Uh, it is at opposition on September 5th. It rises... Uh, 813 to 617 is basically up all night, all month. Uh, it transits um, uh, crossing midnight. Magnitude 7.8, you should be able to see that in binoculars if you can find it with a decent sky chart. And that's what's up in the night sky for September 2017. Remember, we don't charge for the show, and, we don't, and no one charges for astronomy in general, but we may tax your brain.